Hello and welcome to another Magic Duels gameplay. Today we are revisiting the Green Black plus one plus one counter deck that got a lot of new additions in Aether Vault. So let's jump right into it here, starting out with one of the more exciting additions, Walking Ballista. XX in its casting cost for 0, 0 that comes into play with a bunch of plus one plus one counters so already has those plus one plus one counter synergies going we can pay for to add a plus one plus one counter and we can remove a plus one plus one counter to deal a damage to a creature or player so a very versatile card that can be used both as a way to apply pressure kill creatures maybe even take down planeswalkers so there's a lot of things we can do with the ballista we also got Fatal Push, a nice efficient removal spell that can take care of most cheap creatures in the game. There's just a handful of creatures that we will not be able to kill once we enable a Revolt. And we also have a few easy ways to enable a Revolt. Uh, namely, we have Evolving Wilds, as well as one of the next cards that I'll get to. We're also still playing with Fretwork Colony, not the greatest card by itself, but with all those plus one plus one counter synergies, it's uh, definitely worth a slot. And also we are a mostly aggressive deck, so the fact that the colony cannot block is not really a big downside, but especially the fact that we put a plus one plus one counter on it every turn can add a lot of value to a number of cards in a deck. We're also playing with Scrounging Bandar, which is another innocuous looking addition from Aether Vault, but does a lot of good things for the deck. So for 2 mana we basically get a 2-2, consisting of a 0-0 with a 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, and we can move any number of those plus 1 plus 1 counters at the beginning of our upkeep, so this can enable a lot of our synergies. And also if we move all the counters from the Bandar, and the Bandar dies, that's another great way to enable a revolt for our Fatal Push. Then the all-star of the deck has got to be the Winding Constrictor, another addition from Aether Vault. A green and a black for a 2-3, which is already a decent rate, but the exciting part is the text box that basically says whenever a plus one plus one counter would be placed on one of our creatures, we can put an additional plus one plus one counter on it. And whenever a counter would be moved onto a creature, we also get an additional one. And it also looks at counters that would be placed on players. So for example, energy counters, we will also get an additional one. So there's a lot of synergies going on with the Winding Constrictor. And if the opponent doesn't kill it on sight, it's going to be an easy game. We also have a few copies of Grasp of Darkness as additional cheap removal. Then we're also running Tireless Tracker, a great addition in any green deck, but especially in this one where we have the plus one plus one counter synergies, she's even better. We're also playing with the Fairgrounds Trumpeter, not the most exciting card by itself, but again has some neat synergies going with all the plus one plus one counter creatures we already have, especially with the Fretwork Colony that puts a plus one plus one counter on itself every turn. Uh, curving the colony into the Trumpeter is a nice way to get things started, and the Trumpeter will steadily grow larger, and that's where we want to be with this deck. We're also playing with Aethersphere Harvester, an addition from Aether Vault. Just a decent vehicle that does a lot of different things. So adds some evasion to the deck, which otherwise has mostly ground creatures. Adds a bit of life gain with the lifelink ability. And it's only crew 1, so we can easily crew it with any creature in the deck. And it's also just a 3-5, so a decent rate there as well. But it's mostly in the deck to combat aggro strategies, being able to block smugglers' copters and gain some life is uh, perfect. We're also playing Nissa Voice of Zendikar for obvious reasons. Putting plus one plus one counters on all our creatures is a great addition in this kind of deck. We also have Kalitas, Traitor of Gat, mainly for the fact that we have a bunch of spot removal and he goes well with uh, removal spells, but I guess he also has some small plus one plus one counter synergies, but if your Kalitas survives and you're at the point where you can sacrifice zombies, you're probably already winning the game, but uh, still just a great card, also has some lifelink against aggro decks. Then Bristling Hydra, also a card with energy synergies, so having the Winding Constrictor can help there as well. And then we can pay 3 energy 
to put a plus one plus one counter on it and give it hexproof so also has the plus one plus one counter synergies going and a very annoying card for control decks to deal with another payoff card for playing all those plus one plus one counter cards is armorcraft judge drawing us a card for every creature we control with a plus one plus one counter on it also one copy of a life crafter's gift four mana instant that puts a plus one plus one counter on a creature and then we can put a plus one plus one counter on each creature we control with a plus one plus one counter so at the very least if we target a creature we will get two plus one plus one counters on the creature we targeted but most of the time this is going to add three or four plus one plus one counters on all our creatures so a pretty decent combat trick some other cards here that add plus one plus one counters to our creatures. We've got Verger's Gearhulk, five mana, four, four, Trample, that adds four plus one plus one counters split among our creatures. So just a great top end card. As well as two additional copies that kind of do the same thing as the Gearhulk, but since the Gearhulk is a mythic, we only get to play one copy. So we also play with two Rich Gale Tuskers, which are five fives for five that put a plus one plus one counter on each other creature we control. So sometimes this could even be better than the Gearhulk if we've got lots of creatures out. The Gearhulk's probably better, but the uh, Tusker is pretty close. And then we've got Opnixilis as a removal spell and a way to gain some card advantage. And great in a control matchup or any mid-range mirror. Then our mana base, pretty simple. Eight swamps, eight forests, two hissing quagmire, two woodland cemeteries, and four evolving wilds, which are great with tireless tracker and also enable a revolt for fatal push. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, let's take a look here at a hand that's not great, but it's definitely playable. We've got removal spell into Trumpeter into Hydra. Hydra adds a counter for the Trumpeter. So I think I'll keep, but it's definitely on the low end of excitement. Don't have any of our great two drop creatures. But I guess we can still draw into one. And alright, there we go. Winding Constrictor, perfect. So now we get to go Winding Constrictor. Hopefully, the opponent doesn't have Fatal Push here, which they very well may have. Alright, looks like we're safe. The Constrictor is not gonna add any counters to the Trumpeter right away, but as soon as we play the Hydra, then uh, we will get the party started. Up against the Black-White, so it could be some sort of control deck. Um, Alright, Scrounging Bandar is interesting. So if we play the Bandar, it will come into play with an additional plus one plus one counter. Um, but I think... I think we want to wait, since if we play the Bandar after the Trumpeter's in play, the Trumpeter will get a plus one plus one counter and it's more mana efficient to play the Trumpeter here. Uh, our opponent might have something like a Blessed Alliance, in which case I probably don't want to attack, but I don't think we can really play around that card. So yeah, I think I'll play my Swamp and attack for two, see what happens, and then play the Trumpeter and see if our snake survives. All right, it's just a Grasp of Darkness, so couldn't really have done much about that. Play the Trumpeter, and I guess the good news is if we're up against a kind of control deck, then the Hydra is gonna be pretty great. Although I guess they could still have sweepers like Planar Outburst and Languish which would still be able to kill the Hydra. Read the bones from the opponent, scry to draw to and lose to. So definitely have to keep sweepers in mind. And in fact, I think I'm not gonna play the Hydra yet since I think it's better to play the Bandar, get the Trumpeter a little bigger at the end of turn 
and this might entice our opponent into playing one of their sweeper effects and then we can follow up with the hydra and then hopefully our opponent doesn't have a second sweeper so yeah let's attack and keep up grasp just in case our opponent plays a creature like maybe a Kalitas we need to kill end of turn. So Bandar comes into play and then Fairgrounds Trumpeter will get a plus one plus one counter. And at the beginning of our upkeep if our creatures survive we also might want to move a counter from the Bandar. But we'll see. Alright, it's a tap land for the opponent, Forsaken Sanctuary, so no sweeper this turn, doesn't mean they don't have one. So here if we move a counter to the, from the banner to the trumpeter, it's kind of bad against the spot removal spell from the opponent. So actually I don't think I want to move any plus one plus one counters here. And Armorcraft Judge is nice. So I think we attack first. This is only a little awkward if our opponent has Blessed Alliance, in which case I want to play the Armorcraft Judge main phase. But I think I want to attack first and see what our opponent does. All right. So I think I'm fine with playing the Judge here. Even if our opponent has a sweeper, we at least got to draw two cards if this works. And then we still have the Hydra to follow up. I don't think we have any green one drops, so might as well play the judge in case we draw into a tap land. See if the opponent wants to maybe kill one of our creatures in response. Which would probably mean they don't have a sweeper. Unless they want to trade a removal spell for us drawing a card which looks like they want. Alright, so we're only drawing one. And it's a pretty decent one against the control deck. And I think I'll play the land here and say go. So now the question is, does our opponent have a sweeper? A yes or no? So next turn we have two pretty decent plays. Harvester and Hydra, both good against removal heavy decks all right so there's a languish creatures are dead and now we have to decide if we want to deploy the hexproof threats or the vehicle and it seems like playing the harvester is slightly better since we can also keep up the grasp and then if our opponent plays a creature we can and maybe use the Grasp and then next turn we can crew with the Harvester. And uh, I guess we'll also have the energy going. Not quite enough to activate the Hydra twice. But uh, I think I still want to play the Harvester first here. And uh, say go. Alright, that's a Thalia Heretic Cathar from the opponent, which is a creature I probably want to kill with the Grasp, otherwise it's going to be tricky to crew the Harvester if the Hydra enters play tapped. Now what our opponent could do is in response to the trigger from the Hydra, kill it with a spot removal spell which might have been a reason for us to play the Hydra last turn when our opponent was tapped out. But we can still crew the Harvester in response, even if our opponent has a spot removal spell. So it's not all bad, and we also have to keep the Quagmire in mind. But for now, I think I just want to play the Hydra and see what happens. Trigger on the stack and it resolves. Alright, so we've got the Hexproof available. Crew the Harvester and see if our opponent has another removal spell. And here I don't think I want to use a lifelink ability, 
we're up against the control deck so our life total doesn't seem too relevant and if we draw into a second harvester then we will have enough energy to maybe give the hydra hexproof twice all right nothing from the opponent and trumpeter is a decent draw here so we can play the trumpeter and still activate the quagmire and attack with it so let's see if the opponent has a response no all right let's crew harvester and also if we have to use the hydra's ability the trumpeter will get another plus one plus one counter go to combat and see what the opponent's got to work with grasp of darkness targeting the quagmire all right that's fine so if we want to we could use the hydra's ability here just to do lethal damage but i think that's pretty risky in uh, three open mana the opponent could have all sorts of removal spells all right blessed alliance is normally pretty good against hydra but uh, we have two attacking creatures here so we'll only have to sacrifice one so i think we're just sacking the harvester this is pretty bad if our opponent has another sweeper next turn but i think if they had one they would have played it already and i'm still not going to use the hydra's ability here since I want to save it from another potential spot removal spell and the opponent is at four so there's no need to use the ability just to get another counter on the trumpeter when the hydra is good enough to close out the game opponent still with four cards in hand so that's quite a lot hopefully they don't have spot removal plus another blast alliance because then they would be able to kill the hydra Instead, it's uh, Gideon, which is also not bad. Opponent makes a token. And now we would have had the option to use the Hydra's ability and grow the Trumpeter. Uh, because now it's actually too late since the Trumpeter checks at the beginning of the end step. And now we're already in the end step. So now the Trumpeter wouldn't get a counter if we use the Hydra. But I think even if we still had that option available, I probably wouldn't have done it. And now, of course, Walking Ballista is an excellent draw. So let's see, we can use a Ballista to kill the token and just attack our opponent with both. I think that's probably the safest option here. And this will also grow the Trumpeter end of turn. And our Hydra is still safe from a spot removal spell. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, let's take a look at our opener, which I think is too creature light here. Um, Alright, this could work. do have the double green for the Hydra already. So turn to Bandar, hoping for a 3-drop here. Looks like our opponent's on a red-white vehicles deck. Down to 18 we go. All right, another Bandar is not bad. So next turn we get to play another Bandar, setting up for Armorcraft Judge to draw us a bunch of cards. Could even play the Hydra first. 
but we'll have to see if we're under a lot of pressure and we need the extra cards to maybe find a removal spell. Then we might want to play the judge. Smuggler Sculptor right on schedule. Opponent can give it haste. Attack with it right away. So this is where we would like to draw our Aether Sphere Harvesters to block the Copter, gain us some life. Otherwise, we're gonna have to race on the ground. Opponent discarding another Fanatic. Alright, Fatal Push is perfect. That's an answer to Copter while we can still play another Scrounging Bandar. So let's hit for two. And say go. And as soon as the copter gets screwed, we'll try and take it out. PNLR, not bad. Making a 1 1 thopter. And now is the time to take out the copter before our opponent gets to draw and discard. Alright, I don't think we want to move around any counters. Although we could put a counter on one of them, make it into a 3-3. Can attack a little better into this board. Alright. Alright, there's our Aether Sphere Harvester. So now the question is do we want to play Hydra or Judge? I think this is a good window to play the Judge. No need to get greedy. Drawing two cards here seems fine. And I think I will offer a trade for both creatures. And we still have a 3-3 on defense to block the two powered creatures. And our hand's looking pretty decent, especially the Harvester as a way to gain some life. Angel of Invention. Making two servos, so that's kind of a problem. So we could take 8. Next turn we do have the Tusker. Which would make this into a 4-4. So I don't think I want to trade with the Pia. Yeah, it seems pretty bad to trade here. And I definitely don't want to chump yet. So that was definitely a good draw from the opponent. Now, do we want to move any counters? I don't think we do. I would prefer having a 4-4 four, four and a 2-2. Two, two. All right, Walking Ballista. Talk about good draws. Can just take out the Angel. Seems like the safer play. Could also go Harvester plus Ballista. And gain that life back right away. Otherwise our opponent could use Pia. To maybe pump the token. Although we could just play the Ballista for two I guess. Take out the Angel. If our opponent pumps the Thopter we can kill that as well. Yeah let's not take any risks. 
And if our Ballista survives and we can play Tusker next turn, then uh, that's even better. And I'm not gonna make any attacks here. Just wanna play defense since it looks like we've got a late game locked up here. Also keep in mind our opponent can pump the servo tokens with Pia. But if we block a 1-1 one, one with a 3-3 three, three, and they go to pump it twice, we can still kill it with a ballista if we want to. Fleetwheel Cruiser is kind of a problem. It hits pretty hard. But I guess we can just trade with a 3-3. Three, three. So this way we'll take two trample and one flying damage down to four. Thing that's still acceptable. I guess we could also just double block like this. Would only be bad if our opponent has a two damage removal spell or I guess a build to smash. But I think I wanna block like this. Opponent does get the choice of which creature to kill, and they should probably kill the Bandar over the Judge, since the plus one plus one counters are more valuable to us. But uh, looks like that worked out. Uh, do we want to move any counters? I think we want to move some over to the Ballista, but this one I think we want to keep as a 1-1, one -one. but this one will move two counters. All right, sweet. Now I think it's probably better to play the Tusker since the only real threat is the Thopter token and with the Ballista in play we can take care of that. So no need to gain the life with the Harvester yet. All right. And again, I think we can play defense for now and then maybe start attacking with the Harvester. Veteran Motorists is fine, also dies to the Ballista. And a Depala. Alright, I guess in response we want to kill the Motorists before it has two toughness. Just in case. And I guess we might as well take out the Thopter here. So we don't take any unnecessary damage. A land would not be bad, would allow us to play the Harvester and the Hydra. And yeah, we're moving one counter each. Another Bandar, also not a bad draw. Alright, our opponent doesn't have any flyers, but they do have this Speedway Fanatic, so if they do draw, let's say, another Copter, they could hit us for 3 damage. But I guess we still have the Ballista in play. So I guess it's fine to play Hydra plus Bandar here. And still kind of wait on playing the Harvester, just because this is a little more mana efficient. And do we want to start attacking? I think we do. Attack with the Tusker. Probably should have attacked before playing all my cards. Alright, the chum block is fine. Say go. Pia and Kiran Alar. Make two Thopters. And also their activated ability is pretty relevant. And uh, no need to kill them right now. But I'm definitely interested in taking out all those artifacts. 
because otherwise it can start dealing a bunch of damage to us. So we'll move one counter. All right, Winding Constrictor. Kind of late to the party, but I guess I'll take it. So we can play it and then play the Harvester. That way we get some extra energy. And want to make sure to kill all those artifacts before our opponent gets to untap. And I guess we can afford to attack with a little more here. Opponent takes it, that's fine. Keep our Harvester on defense. Next turn we can move a whole bunch of counters to the Walking Ballista. And thanks to the Winding Constrictor, we're gonna get a lot more plus one plus one counters out of the deal. Six for Fleet Wheel Cruiser. Opponent getting in there with everyone. All right, let's make sure to not die here. All right, this looks fine. All right, so didn't get to have fun with uh, Winding Constrictor and Ballista, but I guess we can still move some counters around if we want to. Put it on the Constrictor. Get an additional one. And uh, sure, why not? Play Hydra. Kill Inventor's Apprentice. Crew the Harvester. Also get an extra energy from the Hydra thanks to the Winding Constrictor. Activate the Hydra, get two counters. Activate it once more, because why not? And why not another time? All right. Attack with everyone. And that should do it. All right, on to the next one. Let's take a look at a mulligan. And this is a keep. All right, so we've got turn two constrictor, turn three, probably trumpeter, turn four tracker. So the trumpeter is not gonna get any counters right away. So we're hoping to find something that can add to those counters, but uh, definitely gonna play the Constrictor here. Could even go Harvester next turn, which would also be decent. And then maybe if we draw land, we can play Tracker Land on turn four. So let's start by attacking for two. And uh, let's play out the Harvester. All right, so no removal from the opponent. And if they're in black-white, they usually have a bunch of cheap removal. And there's a Liliana, the Last Hope, which is not quite as effective as our opponent would like her to be with the Harvester in play. All right.
right? There's a fretwork colony, although with Liliana in play, can't really play out the colony. So instead, I think we'll go tracker lands, crew the harvester. Could also play Kalitas and crew. But I think getting the clue from the tracker seems more valuable. And it's not like our opponent has any creatures in play that the Kalatas would be great against. So let's crew the Harvester, put Liliana to 1. And I don't think we want to use the energy yet since we might run to Bristling Hydras in the future. So having that extra energy against the control deck seems irrelevant. I don't think the life total is going to be too important if her opponent is playing a control deck. Let's see if the opponent has a sweeper. They do. Languish. But it's not the end of the world. We got a clue from the tracker and the harvester is going to take out Liliana. Did not draw a land, so can't go Colony plus Trumpeter, but I guess double Colony is still pretty good. And I think I like that more than sacrificing a clue and playing one Colony. Could also play Kalitas, but I think getting the Colonies in play is better. So let's go for it. I guess sacrificing the clue has the advantage of not running into a second sweeper, but playing both colonies is better against spot removal. So they both have their advantages and disadvantages. Given that our opponent just played a languish, I think I want to play out the colony. And even if our opponent does have a sweeper, we still have the harvester that can keep attacking. Alright, doesn't look like a sweeper to me. So our opponent might be holding up removal to maybe kill our harvester once it gets crewed which we could just play around by not crewing the Harvester this turn. Opponent might also want to block with Shambling Vent, which we could prevent by playing Nissa and Minusing. Could also just play Nissa and start plussing, and if our opponent doesn't have any pressure in play, we can just ultimate at some point. I think I like crewing the Harvester and going to combat and just attacking with the harvester see what happens archangel avacyn well that's not something i considered but i guess our harvester is not gonna die so it's not the end of the world but that does make our plan of playing nissa a lot worse so i think i will gain some life here just because we do have these two colonies and now with Avacyn in play our life total might be in danger. So given that our opponent played Avacyn it seems unlikely that they're gonna play a sweeper afterwards so I think I'm just gonna play the trumpeter and say go. Trumpeter is gonna get a counter and is gonna start growing together with the colonies and then next turn we can play Nissa and Minus if we want to, to add a bunch of pressure. Glimmer of Genius. Alright, so our opponent's playing blue as well, as it turns out. And now they have energy to use Ether Hub. Avacyn getting in there. But I think it's time to just play Nissa and Minus. Could also try and protect Nissa with the Harvester. 
but I think just attacking our opponents is better here. So we can crew. And this way we can put a counter on the harvester as well. Seems decent. Go to combat. And attack with everyone. Opponent takes it. Trumpeter up to a 5 5, so can survive languish. So this is gonna go down, but that's fine. Opponent with five cards in hand, so I expect at least two removal spells, if not a sweeper. Although sweeper means we can just crew the harvester, maybe get in with a quagmire. All right, so it is a languish. Do they also have a way to kill the trumpeter is a question. Doesn't look like it. All right, so let's see here. We could play the Hydra to crew the Harvester. Only have two energy, so the opponent could still kill the Hydra. But I guess they would need a removal spell as well. Could also just play the Bandar to crew the Harvester with. And then also sacrifice a clue. I mean, the opponent's gonna need something here, otherwise they're dead. So I think we'll start by sacrificing a clue here. Alright, so walking ballista is interesting. I think I prefer playing the bandar here, in case it gets countered. All right, their opponent with a scatter. So that means their opponent's gonna fall to one and then we have a lethal ballista. Unless their opponent goes to activate shambling vent, but uh, I don't think that's a fight our opponent's gonna win. So the opponent needs to gain life and stabilize the board, but with harvester, quagmire, it's pretty difficult. I guess if they have something like a Sorin Grim Nemesis and kill the Trumpeter, but they're just saying go. Fatal Push can kill a Shambling Vent. I guess we just play Ballista for one. See what happens. Opponent has Torrential Gear Hulk. They're still dead to Aether Sphere Harvester here. Scatter to the winds. All right, so I guess if our opponent has Blast Alliance, they can still kill the Harvester here. And then we're kind of in trouble but I think we still go for it. All right, looks like we got there. Sweet, I wanna thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day.